This lesson is one that I came across when I was doing research on a book that I was writing called Weird Ideas That Work, and I was looking for creative organizations and, well, how you build a creative organization and what gets in the way. And um, I had breakfast with Mitch Kapoor, who is the founder of a company called Lotus, and he's sort of this old hippie. He's sort of like a frumpled sort of accidental billionaire. In fact, he's sort of the poster child for the accidental billionaire. And he told me this astounding story about how after he'd founded Lotus, which started as a company that was founded by a few hippies, essentially, and they wrote this, uh, this uh, spreadsheet program, and they started selling it, and it started selling and selling and selling. And so quickly, it had a company, it was just a few people. And then he looked around, and there was three or 4,000 people. And um, he was um, chairman of this giant company. And, and um, one of the things that um, I remember in particular he emphasized was, I was used to sort of creative hippies, and I was surrounded by marketing guys from Procter & Gamble wearing white shirts and suits, and I couldn't understand a word they were saying. He's got a multi-billion dollar company, he's got a CEO from McKinsey, and he can't quite figure out what's going on. First, he's amazed that they're selling all the software, and second, he was actually disgusted by the lack of creativity of the people. So what he did was with his actually head of organizational development, a woman named Frida Klein, who is now his wife, he actually had another wife in between her, um, what they did was they took the resumes for the first 40 people who um, started the company, um, and they just changed the names, and they put them into the human resource management system, the people system, to see which ones would get hired by the company. They included Mitch's resume in the batch, by the way, and they put it in the human resource management system, and even though they had job openings, and a good 30 of those 40 people were qualified for job openings, they didn't get callbacks because they had funny things in their resume, like they'd spent a year traveling around the country, they'd been in an ashram, um, they had, um, uh, well, Mitch had taken Transcendental Meditation, that's where the name Lotus came from, and what essentially happened was that the creative people who started the company couldn't even get a call back. And if you fast forward across the history of Lotus, they only ever had one successful product after that initial product, a product called Lotus Notes. And the only way that was possible was that Mitch took a guy named Ray Ozzie and gave him some money and pulled him out of the rigid, stifling corporate structure that just knew how to sell things and not do anything creative. And to me, it's, it's sort of like an astounding story of how um, when you have a machine that can sell something, it can completely drive out creativity. So the first lesson for me is that the difference between creative work and routine work really do require different sorts of people and different sorts of processes. So those same people who made the company possible would not have been particularly good at selling the stuff in sort of a routine sort of sales pitch. But in the process of bringing aboard so many people who are so great at sales, they, they wouldn't bring in people like themselves, which brings me to the second lesson, which is uh, one of the best, one of the most consistent findings you can find in the behavioral sciences is this thing called homosocial reproduction, a concept from Rosa Beth Moss Cantor, which is essentially we love our favorite person. Who is our favorite person? Ourselves and we mindlessly search for people like ourselves and automatically reject people who are different. And that's what happened at Lotus. It started out with the creative types, but once they started bringing in all those people who could sell and do routine work, then it drove out the creative types. And to me, the lesson isn't that those people from Procter & Gamble were um, bad and the, and the old hippies that Mitch loved so much were good. The lesson, and, and hippies aren't the only people who are creative, that's the last thing I'd want to say, but, but the lesson is, is that um, there are different sorts of logics and different ways to going about routine versus innovative work.